Good morning. This is another wonderful day that our God has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Welcome to the first Sunday in Advent. The year is running out. We're beginning a new year of the Christian calendar. We have quite a lot of things to do today. And so we'll get to them. Just a few announcements. Uh, some of them are behind our programs here, so please look through them if you need to. Order Poinsett has just uh, sent its $15. You can send that. Uh, next Sunday, we will continue our confirmation classes. And then, of course, uh, the young adult and college student for our fellowship. I just love coffee. Just RSVP to Teresa. The phone number is behind so that we can have an idea of how many people will be coming. Also, we have the opportunity to give to us the ministry of our church and also to the Lord. Uh, many people do that on, on Giving Tuesday. You can go online to Shadron United Methodist Church org and you can actually donate towards the ministry of our church. You can donate towards the carpet that we've talked about in the past. And I'm hearing that some people are more interested in that. That's good. You can donate towards the outreach. You can donate towards our mission share, which we have not done anything about. You know, it's about 18000 or something. So you can donate at that time. So let's see some donation coming in on Giving Tuesday. And like I said last week, if you've not been given towards the ministry of our church and you're a member or a regular attender of this church, this is your opportunity to give towards the ministry of our church. Finally, before we continue, remember, uh, we're in December, and I want to kind of highlight that to you. I will not ask you to give me money through somebody. I'm not going to ask you to send money to somebody in Nigeria or Russia or Germany or England. If I want money, I'll come to you directly. I am not going to be at a meeting for 10 hours that I'm not able to come out. Uh, those who have been here for a while, they know what I'm talking about, and I just want to point your attention to that. So when someone says that, tell them, don't worry, I'll see him uh, in church or I'll see him in the office. You don't need to. I don't need a middle, you know, go in between. So please let's take note of that. Uh, it's a good time to invite someone to your home. It's a good time to be a blessing to someone. And so please, let's uh, do that. We will begin to do a lot of singing. Some are going to be familiar to you. Some are going to be non-familiar. But don't worry, just rejoice before the Lord. Let's stand together for our call to worship. Give the king your justice, O God. May he judge your people with righteousness. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he the the needy and crush the oppressed. May he, may he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the grass. Like showers, no more. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. Bless is the Lord, the Lord God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be the glorious name. Amen. Amen. Uh, there's a song, 2034. If you know the song, you can join. If you want to tap your, your feet or your hands or clap, you are free to do that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, most high. Glory to the name of the Lord, 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 most high. 
Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Most high. Holy is the name of the Lord. 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 Most high. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Most high. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord, one more time. The name of the Lord is. A strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. One more time, blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 Most high. I'm teaching you now to clap. Hey. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Let's do it one more time. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. You are good students. I know you're not used to that, but you're good students. Thank you so much. Opening prayers together. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that we can come into your house today and, and worship you with those who love you too. Thank you for inspiring and leading your people to establish your house here in this place. We pray that all who worship here might experience your love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. We pray for your people all over the world. We may come with us as we serve you and others. May everyone who trusts you in Jesus Christ as Lord, Savior, find and experience peace with God and all this themselves. Through your only son, son, we pray. Amen. Opening our, our hymn for today, first hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, we'll sing the first, second, and the third. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourn in lonely as I live, until the Son of God Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall 
come to Thee, O Israel. O come Thou wisdom from on high, and all that all things far and nigh towards the path of no. in our ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, great Lord, Tribes on Sinai's side In ancient times once gave the Lord In cloud and majesty and all Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Please be seated. We continue singing as we sing our Advent song. We sing the only verse while we then welcome the family of Christ to light the first Advent candle of this season, 2090 Advent song. Light the advent candle one Now the waiting has begun We have started on our way Time to think of Christmas Day Candle, candle Burning bright, lining in the cold winter night. Candle, candle, burning light. Good morning. For the first Sunday of Advent, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged on or tuned in. We are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where, together, we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's ways and that, way that we may walk in God's paths. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled.
children's time. Stephanie. Good morning. Just the three of us today. In Chronicles, Second Chronicles 20 in the Bible, it tells us that the Moabites and Ammonites gathered a vast army to fight the people of Judah. What if you were someone who was part of the people of Judah and you heard that, would you be afraid? No, I would be, I would be really scared. And it tells us in the Bible that the people of Judah were worried and alarmed. They were vastly outnumbered. That means there were a lot more of the Moabites and Ammonites than there were people of Judah. So their situation appeared hopeless, and the people of Judah came from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem to seek God's help. King Jehoshaphat, isn't that fun to say? <laughs> I like saying that. King Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah, even children, were gathered together and prayed to God for guidance and protection. Jehoshaphat ended his prayer with these words, for we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you, God. Jehoshaphat knew that their army couldn't fight this battle alone. Without God, things were hopeless. They had no chance of defeating this huge army that was getting ready to attack them. They needed help that only God could give. So Jehoshaphat led his people to God, the place of hope, and God answered them. He told Jehoshaphat that the battle was not theirs, it was his, it was God's, and God would give them the victory. The next morning, Jehoshaphat and his men went out to meet the great army. But when they came to the place where the army was camped, they found only dead bodies. Wow. During the night, the armies had fought against each other, and everyone was dead. So there was no one left to fight the people of Judah. God was with King Jehoshaphat and his people. They probably thought that their situation was hopeless, but with God, there is always hope. God is with you and with me, too. So there are times when, like Jehoshaphat, we don't know what to do. What Jehoshaphat did, though, is a good idea. He kept his eyes on God. And we can do that too. There will be times when we get hurt or times when we are sad. But God always has us in his hands, just as he had the people of Judah and their king in his hands. Stories like this give us hope. All right, let's have an echo prayer. Dear Jesus, please help us to remember that even when we are sad or scared, You have us in your hands so we can have hope. In your name we pray. Amen. Just one. <laughs> Just one. The dentists have been calling. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you. I would like to officially welcome all those who are joining us online. I, you know, sometimes when we see the number of people join online, we didn't know that there are some people we don't know. So I met some people over the last, was it last week or some last Sunday, and they said, "Oh yeah, we are the Pirate Pine, and we always watch it on the TV. We cast it there." I'm like, "Okay, so now we have to behave ourselves, right?" So welcome all of you that are joining us in worship and those who are going to be watching after now. Uh, very quickly, we want to go into our prayer time. Uh, we'll still continue to pray for our prayer list, but we have additional ones. Uh, thank God Daniel has been able to see a doctor and we're watching and testing, so we're grateful. Daniel, God will continue to strengthen you and we will keep praying for you. Uh, Sharon, uh, she's with Kelly in Harrison today. Uh, Kelly's preaching for Lamy at the Harrison Church. 
So Sharon is with her, but he has asked us to pray for Brent, who has cancer with the liver, and uh, they want us to pray for Brent, her nephew. So please, uh, we need to keep praying. And this season, uh, these are the times we need to keep remembering our people in prayers, and we need to send them text messages to, to remind them that we think about them. And so please, if you know anyone who is struggling in our church members, your church family, let's know so that we can put them on prayer list, but also so that we can call them when necessary. We have this confidence that God hears our prayers, and that's why we go to him in prayers. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to you this morning for the opportunity to come to your house again. For in your presence is a fullness of joy, and at your right hand, pleasures forevermore. We thank you for those of us who are in church this morning and those who are watching us online in various places to, tonight, today. We, we thank you for your blessings upon them, and we give you praise and glory. Today we bring the needs of many in our church family and friends to you. We continue to pray for Randy and Heidi. Uh, we believe you that you continue to bring your healing upon them. And Jim Stokey and Pat Colgate. Uh, we pray for the family of Jim Welly, uh, who had passed away. I'm going to be with you. We pray for Jeremy Smith's dad, who is healing, um, progressing. Pray for Garrett Ferguson. We pray for Lamy in Nigeria. Uh, who has been with our mom and with family, we thank you. We continue to pray for Daniel as the doctor's test to know what is going wrong and so that your healing will be upon him. We pray for various uh, cousins and nephews, especially for the Kachuas who are traveled to Georgia. We pray that you keep them safe and bring them back safely. And those who are sick in their families, you bring healing. We continue to pray for the family of June Colin, uh, whose mom is improving after septic illness. We, we pray that the healing will continue. We pray for our church family. We pray for those who are in need of prayers. We pray for those who are traveling at this time, returning after the Thanksgiving week, and we pray that you will keep them safe. We at this time uh, bring Brent unto your care, Sharon's nephew, with cancer of the liver. We do know that you can do miracles. You can use the doctors, you can use medications, you can use miracles to bring healings. And so we pray that in your own will, whatever you want to use, may you bring healing unto Brent. Each of us, as we sit in church today, we have various needs that we may not be able to vocalize or even discuss or even think about. Lord, we bring them to you today. For those of us here and for those who are watching us, that you will meet us at the various points of our needs as we begin this season of Advent, a time of anticipation, a time of repentance, a time of waiting. May you bring healing. May you bring your peace upon us. We thank you. We ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The reading of God's word. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. 
the law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Good morning. Our um, scripture reading is from Matthew 24, 36 through 44. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. These are the words of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We'll now take, I told you we're going to have a lot of singing this season, so we'll take a special music from Sean. I hope we'll get our microphone set well so that we, those who are watching online can enjoy the music also. So, Sean. And good morning again. <laughs> the piece I'm going to play is Near to the Heart of God.
Thank you, Sean, for sharing that gift. We continue in our worship this morning as we sing the spirit song. Three, four, seven. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let Him have the things that hold you and His Spirit like a dove. We descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and feel your song with gladness as our hearts are filled with joy lift your hands in sweet surrender to his name oh give him all your tea and sadness give him all your years of pain and you enter into life in Jesus' name. Please be seated. We've got a lot of singing today. Get ready. Now, if you are someone who didn't like to sing or who don't like to sing, I sympathize with you, but uh, that's not enough. I can't help you. I said to a friend of mine some years ago who said, you know, I don't like all the singing. I don't like to sing. I said, that's a very serious problem because you have to re-evaluate whether you wanted to go to heaven or not. And he looked at me somehow. I said, because, you know, what I read in Revelation is that they do a lot of singing in heaven, a lot of singing. Now, nobody knows what keys they sing, in, you know, on whether it's a key A or flat or G or Z. They didn't tell us that they were wonderful singers. They just said the people were singing. And you may be intimidated sometimes when you see Joel, Joel singing or, you know, Sean played that. You're like, okay, who can play that forever? Who can sing that? But you have to enjoy and put yourself in that. You know, when the choir sings sometimes, sometimes I don't know what they are singing, but I just enjoy it because I know I have to live with that all the rest of my life if I'm going to make it to heaven. So... This season, practice. You got to practice to go to heaven, okay? By doing a lot of singing. We'll do a lot of singing. The Christmas people. I have a lengthy sermon, as I've always claimed. And uh, I'm glad that uh, there are no people to time me. Is Clark here today? Oh. No, why are you here today? But, you, you know... I wanted us to remember some of the things, maybe just to remind us some of the things that we've known before. Uh, the Advent season is the beginning of the Christian New Year. It's the beginning of the Christian calendar. Uh, and you see these Advent candles that are going to be lit, the candle of hope, and then there is a candle of peace. There is a candle of love. 
and there is the candle of joy, the pink one. And then we have the center one called the Christ candle, which will be lit on Christmas Eve. Uh, we hope to have two Christmas Eve services here, one earlier, maybe at 5 or 5.30, I'm not sure what time that is. And then the other one will be later, we're going to have communion, but also we're going to be celebrating Christmas. One of the things I discover is that Christmas belongs to us. Okay? Christmas belongs to us. It belongs to the church. Everything about Christmas belongs to the church. However, it is possible for you to have something and somehow that thing is hijacked from you by somebody else and they use it for their purpose. And that's my story as I reflect on the Christmas season beginning from Advent is that the world has hijacked everything about it and we've surrendered it to the world. So the secular world tells us what to do when to put your Christmas tree, when to put your Christmas light, when to do this, when to do that. And suddenly we discover that Christmas has been hijacked. But we are the Christmas people. We are the people who owns it. We own this season. So now it's been hijacked and it has become like a pure commercial venture for some. It's a time to buy and buy and put a lot of debt on your credit card. Because if you don't do that, it means Christmas is not holding. For those of you who are kids, you know, you will always say like, yeah, I want to buy this, I want this, I want this. And you wait till Christmas season. That's a way of announcing to my kids, maybe no gifts for you this year. But, but you know, they wait, wait and wait until that time. I remember growing up, you know, I want to get something, I'm waiting for the Christmas time. Because that's when the spirit of spending comes. And then we spend and spend, and even if we don't have credit card, people go borrow in my culture to just make the Christmas a big deal. I also see that the world has kind of sandwiched the Christmas season. You have the Black Friday and the Cyber Monday and all of them just for you to keep spending and spending. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong in spending if you have the money to spend. But if Christmas season is all about spending, he's been hijacked. And I know that those of you who are watching online and some of you watching in, listening in church today is like, oh, this guy's going to spoil my Christmas. That's not, the, that's not my purpose. But if I did, that's all right. <laughs> For some people, the Christmas season had become a time of depression. Depression because that depression has been forced by others on us. Now, I don't mean that, you know, some people have lost family members in a season like this. And I have friends who Christmas season is a time where it's the highest form of depression for them. Because they remember the family members that are close to them that they have lost. And rather than celebrate Christmas, they're just in this deep depression thinking about the loved one that passed away. Uh, some people have seen it as a time for lasciviousness. That's a, that's a old biblical word for being overindulgent on something. That's when some people drink more alcohol. If they've been having one bottle or one glass of wine all through the year, Christmas season, a friend of mine said, you know, people will always buy you beer. Even if they don't like you, they can buy you a whole carton of beer to keep drinking. It's Christmas season. Drink yourself to stupor, they say. So we see that the world seems to be reinterpreting this season for us. But I've always said before Christmas is Advent. Actually, the Christmas season by the Christian calendar begins on the 24th of December, Christmas Eve. And then you have, you know, the 12 days of Christmas. However, Advent is a time of preparation. Before Christmas is Advent. Advent is a period of preparation. Advent is a period of waiting. Advent is a time of repentance. That's why probably you see me wearing lots of dark colors because I'm very, I'm very liturgical. So I like, you know, I'll do a lot of dark colors. It's a sign of repentance. But also, it's a time of anticipation where you're waiting. I said casually, we had at our art council and we talked about. You know, maybe we should do some Christmas carols earlier. 
And I said, yeah, that's good. But you know, you have to remember that the baby had to wait for nine months, right? You got to wait for nine months for the baby to be born. And the tendency of the modern people is that we want the pregnancies to start today and the baby born next week. Microwave baby. <laughs> so I don't have any problem with those of you. Now, Jubilee had started playing Christmas carol, but he knows that it's like an abomination for me to hear it. So he puts his headset on and he's playing all this Christmas carol. He's waiting for the time that he will be free to now play. The same with Sophia. They know you dare not play that while daddy is around here. It's not yet time. The baby is not yet born. But I think it's important, whether you want to play your Christmas carols early enough, the season of Advent prepares us for the expected Messiah. At Advent, we are in the threshold of looking at the past and then looking at the future. In the Christian calendar, the Advent season actually was designed for the celebration of the second coming of Christ. So that the gospel reading that was read that, this morning was talking about the day and the time nobody knows when Jesus comes. So the church was looking in anticipation for the coming of Jesus Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. However, the church says, as we wait for the King's second coming, we can remember his first coming. And so this season is a season of preparation anticipation these two perspectives the past and the future help speak into the present and that's very important for you as a believer hope, love, peace joy, advent redefines these four components for us as Christians so that when we go through Things that we go through in the present, it is always different from the way the unbelievers go through them because of our perspective or advent. Christmas is coming. The loved ones are going to come. Gifts are going to be open. There will be baking to share. You know, baking of different cakes and sweets. We prepare our homes for celebration. But even more importantly, then these outward preparation is a preparation of our hearts. Preparation of our hearts. Hope. The candle that was lit today is a candle of hope. What is hope? A, a, a confident, a confident expectation of your tomorrow. Knowing that tomorrow will be all right. So before the arrival of Christ 2,000 years ago, there was hopelessness. There was fear. God has not spoken to these people for 400 years. There was anxiety. And when Jesus came, he broke, light broke into the darkness. Hope broke into hopelessness. So the prophet was talking about it in the Old Testament reading that has come in a time, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted upon all hills and multitudes shall go into it. And there will no longer be fighting and war, all the weapons of war will become plows. They will be used for domestic things. Hope for the future of what God can do. But as we await the second coming of Christ, the hope that our Savior and King will bring all the evils and the pain of this world into its conclusion and usher a new realm gives us confidence and gives us hope. When our confidence for tomorrow dwindles, how can we walk in hope? I suggest to you, remember the, the word Jesus. Jesus summarizes our hope for the future. Jesus is the one that gives us hope for our help. He gives us the help that is needed. In Hebrews 4, 16, he said we can ask and come boldly to the throne of grace to receive help and mercy in the time of need. Hope to overcome when we face challenges and feelings of hopelessness in any form, knowing that God can give us grace to overcome all the oppositions, the financial stress, the political stress, the family stress. Hope to overcome. With Christ, strength to overcome all the obstacles is there. 
But not just hope for the present. More importantly is a hope for eternity. My job as a pastor, you know that, is always, most of it, not most of it, but a lot of it, is to do funerals. Okay? I like doing weddings a lot. But sometimes when you are in a older community, you probably do more funerals than weddings. And one of the things I've always encouraged people, I kind of see the difference between those who have their faith in Christ and those who don't, just by talking with them. Those who have their faith in Christ, they will cry and weep about the person they've lost. But they will say words like, but I know that one of these days I will see them. Because they know they have their hope in Christ. They know that this present world is not the end of the story. There is something beyond here. And so because of that, they are encouraged in the midst of their grief. I am one person where I've always encouraged people to cry. It's very good to cry. If it's time to cry, don't say, oh, don't cry, don't cry. Stop giving people, you know, tease you. Oh, clean your face. No, let them cry. However, after they have cried, they need a reminder that their hope in eternity is what should define the way they live their lives today. I do know that the person is dead, but I know if they have their faith in Christ and I have my faith in Christ, I will see them again. Now, this is where I want to conclude my talk. I have many other things I wanted to say, but I want to conclude my talk by saying I think it is important to remind ourselves of our hope for eternity. That's why we do some of the things we do. You know, for, as Christians, there are many things we do that nobody will ever recognize. Nobody will ever give you an award. You know, many of our brethren here, you've received an award in the community, you've re received an award, professional awards. But the church will not come and give you a plaque. Maybe they'll give you for retire at 99 or something. But apart from that, they just say, God bless you, right? That's all. Nobody recognizes you. How will you continue to give to a body that doesn't recognize you? How will you continue to labor and give your strength to a people we don't clap for you every time. The only reason you could do that is because there is a vision for something bigger than now. There is a hope for eternity. We've got someone who is going to say, welcome, thou good and faithful servant. That's where our reward comes from. If I am preaching to hope that I just get all the rewards in this world, now, thanks to PPRC and church, I get a salary, right? If that's the only reason why I'm preaching, I'm miserable. That's what Paul said. If only in this world is our hope, we have people most miserable. But we have a hope in the future, in eternity. When Jesus shall come, when he shall transform our lives, there is an ultimate tomorrow. Things may not be as all right as I want it. I may pray and fast and do everything and things may not change for the better for me for now, but I have a hope for tomorrow. And that hope for tomorrow helps us now in the midst of crisis, in the midst of pain, in the midst of discouragement, there is hope. We are a people of hope. May God grant us grace to remember the hope that we have in him and live accordingly. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you. As we begin this Advent season, help us to patiently wait on you, hope in you. Whether we are sick, whether we are discouraged, remind us, O oh God, to live our lives as hopeful people to the praise and glory of your name. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. We'll stand together at this time and do something that probably we've not done for a long time. We will be reciting the Apostles' Creed. Let's stand together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may please be seated. Remember the words of Christ as it says, it's more blessed to give than to receive as we take our offerings, tithes, and various donations. For those of you who are online, you can write your check to Shadron United Methodist Church or you can go to shadronunitedmethodist.org. There is a place there that says give and you can click, it's secured, and you can give towards the ministry of our church. Let's stand together. Praise God for whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures ye below. Praise Him above ye heavenly. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Offering prayers together. God of peace and justice. Homes devastated, and hearts broken. We pray to see today that Isaiah saw in his heart when swords are pounded into plowshares. These gifts we give this morning may they be used to make human hearts ready for peace and for the reign of your Son. In His holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Those in him, my hope is built, built on nothing else. It's important that our hope is built on Jesus Christ, the solid rock. 368. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus God and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other grounds the sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand when his lovely face I rest on his unchanging grace mm -hmm. my uncle holds with my friend on Christ the solid rock I 
stand all of the grounds is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand is all this over and his blood support me the flaming choice in through his way he then is all my hope and stay on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may i then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before thy throne on Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Uh, thank you for all of you who have watched uh, online and sharing with other people. Thank you, uh, college students and single adults. Do not forget your meeting, 5 p.m. next week at uh, Just Love Coffee. And then Lami asked me to thank uh, some of the women who have brought food for the kids. She told me to say that, so I'm sure she's watching me now. I have to say it to make peace. So please, she sends a thank you for supporting and bringing those food for us, and we are grateful. Joel, thank you again. Thank you for that wonderful song, Sean. Thank you all those who have helped us, uh, ushers and everyone. And those at the back there, Stephanie and uh, Teresa and Jubilee. And those of you who worshiped, us, worshiped with us for the first time today, thank you. I'm going to shake hands with you again, but we we'll welcome you and we want you to come again. Many of you came from the college, but I don't want to call your name. I'm not going to stand you up. I'm just going to be, come again. We love you. And thank you, Grice family, for, for that uh, wonderful lighting of the candle. I did well today. Oh, I'm proud of myself again. Come on. Yeah, I did well. <laughs> no, don't think that next week will be, I don't know, no promises. But thank you so much. It was a great time, and we really appreciate all of you for all that you've done today. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Do have a great week.